Hey guys, it's Jake from Safe Fun. We're gonna work on getting this wood chipper to run a little better. First, we're gonna get the uh, carburetor off and take it over to get cleaned. Need to get his choke cable loose. There's four bolts holding the uh, carburetor down to the intake. Take the fuel line loose here, and it looks to be the only things that are gonna be holding it. Well, that's a good color for fuel. Yeah, it's all rusted on. We're gonna go get some uh, penetrating oil and we'll be back. Uh, what this stuff does, if you don't already know, uh, spray it on the on the studs and let it soak in for a little while. And it's a very thin lubricant that will kind of penetrate between the threads of the stud and the body of the carburetor that I'm trying to pry uh, against each other. It'll penetrate that gap and lubricate it so that it's easier to remove as long as it works. Uh, normally you let it soak for a little while, so we're gonna let it soak overnight and we'll be back tomorrow to try and pull this thing off again. Hopefully it's got enough lubrication. All right, let's see if this thing's lubricated enough to come off. That's not seem like it. I'm gonna use a little makeshift hammer. Sucker does not want to come off. I have to break the whole thing off and just buy a new carburetor. That is not looking promising. What can you do? It's a Ford. Can't get the carburetor off. Gonna have to replace the whole engine. All right, I got a few more tools to mess with now. Let's see if we can get this sucker off. That took forever in a day. Oh, <laughs> that one actually broke. That's funny. I guess I'm buying a new carburetor. Gonna stuff this down in here so I don't get any more trash in the intake. I guess the best thing to do would be replace it though. Well, here's a lineup of parts we're working with today. Got uh, battery terminals to replace the old ones. Ignition switch, because they don't have the key to the old one. Starter solenoid, because the old one got stolen. Brand new spark plugs, because the old ones suck. Brand new Wix filter and some heavy duty motor oil from uh, O'Reilly. A little bit of magic in a bottle of sea foam. Try and clean up them cylinder walls a little bit. Inline fuel filter, so we don't ruin our brand new carburetor. And we got the old carburetor over here that we'll be stealing parts off of. Hopefully we'll be able to get this thing to run today. Let's do it. We're going to start off by comparing the difference between the old carburetor and the new carburetor and what I need to rob from this one to make that one work. So obviously I'll need uh, this guy here to be able to hold the air cleaner box on. I'll need uh, this little post here for the throttle linkage that goes to the governor. Uh, I may steal this little vent cap, I don't know. It is interesting, I'm trying to figure out what uh, what's up with this. This doesn't have a little pin, bob, vent, I don't know. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not that good with carburetors. Doesn't have that on the old one, so I don't know what I'm supposed to connect to it. Uh, vacuum over here is already plugged, so that's good, because I don't really use vacuum for anything on this. We do have one vacuum plug down here for the vacuum advance on the distributor. Although this, uh, this rod here is supposed to be connected and it's not, so strike one on brand new carburetor. We'll get that connected though, it'll be okay. Uh, ba, ba, ba. It's got an electric choke instead of a manual choke, so I'll have to wire that up at some point. But for right now, I'm not going to worry about it. Woo! Well, let's just transfer those things over and we'll see how far we get. okay she'll ride maybe if it's the same thread all right i guess that's it what's in there 
I need this linkage to reconnect down there, so I gotta take take a C clamp off down here and lose it somewhere. I didn't lose it. It didn't fly off. I got it in. There we go. Let's get this little C clamp back on. That's where it'll spring off and fly somewhere. Wow, it didn't. That went swimmingly well. I feel like that shouldn't be on, but we'll see what happens when the... Yeah, it doesn't seem right. That's probably not adjusted well. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe it'll work just fine. I'll steal this little uh, vent cap, sneak it on there for right now, because I don't know what's supposed to go there. The vent cap down here. That one we're actually going to be using the vacuum port on. Actually, I'll put this one over here, because I don't think this part really matters. It seems to just go straight through to the air horn. So we'll just put a cap over that one. And then we'll use this nicer cap for this one that probably goes somewhere inside. Well, I guess we're ready for this thing to be installed. Let's do this. All right, new, car, new gasket. Just gotta clean up the intake. I'll just take a nice, a quick little knifing to it. Pull the dog hairs out of the intake. Let's see, does it go that way? Nope, it goes this way. Gasket's just a little bit off, but that's okay. All right, a new call barata. Oh, that's cool. The parts I don't need are dragging on the intake. Well, let's take a uh, adjuster tool to it. This part right here is grinding on the intake right bar. A little bit of clearance. Looks pretty good to me. I'll see how it fits. It clears. Woo, button, button. Woo. It seems to be further out than it used to be. We'll adjust that later, some other time. That's the uh, rod to the governor. Uh, the governor changes the throttle position based on the detected RPM. And when it detects no RPM, it goes full throttle and burns out your motor. So make sure your belt doesn't break. Let's go ahead and get this thing bolted out. Spicer, spicer, washer, washer. Don't ask me why there's only two. It's fine, don't worry about it. So this post has thread issues, that's great. I don't remember what this was, but take a stab in the dark and say 10 millimeter. It is not half inch. Yep, that's it. Okay, that's as tight as that one's getting. All right, let's get the fuel doing the whopper here off of the old one. And uh, then we'll get started on wiring the electrical. Well, and uh, plumbing the fuel, I guess. We are gonna be running it off of a uh, temporary gas can, so not worried about uh, what rust is in the tank at this point. We'll uh, fix or replace that later. Here's the fuel doing the whopper I was talking about. I don't know if that's a filter or just an inlet. I've got an inline filter before the pump that I'm gonna be putting in, so I'm not worried if that is a filter. Probably ought to get a new one at some point. I think it is a filter, and it's probably not so in so good a shape. Put this in here until it's good and tight. All right, that'll do. Let's uh, go ahead and pull this off, and then we'll uh, find another, we'll pull a piece off of the other fuel line and replace that. Oh, fuel is a beautiful brown color. Let's move on over to the fuel delivery system. Fuel line that runs from the pump. That is a little bit cracked, so we'll cut the crack off and pretend we didn't see it. Over to the fuel tank. Take the fuel tank side loose. We'll cut a section off for uh, for the top. Cut a splice uh, somewhere close to the fuel pump and splice in our fuel uh, filter. Well, there is a little bit of gasoline dripping. Let me grab a drip, drip can. That feels nice and sludgy. Look at that. That old fuel smells like a uh, like cabinet varnish. It's full of rust or degraded uh, fuel hose. Keep the hose clamps. Pull this one off and uh, see if I can find some hose somewhere. That is some thick sludge. Look at that stuff. Well, we're in luck. I got some uh, nylon braided fuel line that I was going to use for another project. I really should have some tape when I cut this. Uh, I'll cut a short piece for up front and I'll cut a little bit longer piece to go in between the fuel pump and the fuel filter. I have another piece that goes into the gas tank that we're going to be just sitting on the ground. That should work. Alrighty, well, let's move on down to the fuel pump. 
So I'm using one of these inline jobs and just cut the small nipple off and use the big nipple. And I'll go ahead and attach the other side of the hose. Still got what looks like oil dripping out of the uh, fuel pump, so that's great. Alrighty, there we go. That's our jerry rig fuel system. Let's take the other end into a fuel jug and call it good. Let's get started on ignition. So we've got a bit of a problem with this uh, ignition switch here. Main one being I don't have a key for it. So we're gonna pull it out and put a new one in. New switch. The poles are labeled one, two, and three, so that's obvious which one's what. Time to do some research on that, I guess. Okay, so I think I can use either two or three as my battery. Uh, use the other one for ignition, and then this number one terminal for start. So I'll probably use two for battery, three for ignition, one for start. So I think the starter solenoid is probably gonna go right about there. Those, line, those holes line up pretty well, so we'll and stick that in. Let's make up some wire terminals to go from ignition switch to the ignition pole, which is labeled I. Maybe I don't understand how this is supposed to go. That should really just be power ground. Is that how that goes? Power pole here, starter wire goes there. Did a little bit of research. Starter solenoid. The I is ignition. Yes, it's starter. Well, ground is this uh, bracket right here. <laughs> and uh, it's not doing a very good job grounding to this metal here because it's all painted up. So. We're going to hook this ground wire to the bolt that, uh, and the bracket right there. And then starter wire will go to the starter prong. And then maybe we'll see it crank. Uh, I probably want to get the uh, gunky fuel out of this. I'm supposed to gap these things to, I don't know what, to boom, gapped. I'll figure out the gap and pull them back out and gap them correctly sometime. But for right now, it might run. pour a little bit of fuel into the bowl I think and then uh, hook the battery up see if my ignition system works there we go primaries are shooting some fuel now that should work okay set this uh, up up to try and catch all the wonderful fuel slurry that's in the line right now I think I want to try and clean out the fuel pump here a little bit it had all that gunk in it uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this wire loose or this line loose and I think I'm gonna spray brake clean down through and see if uh, see if it'll clear some of that out. Ugh. I have a feeling replacement may be in order. Look at the back feed into my filter. That's terrible. Well, let's just try and crank it and see what happens. Y'all watch the fuel in the filter right here and the oil pressure gauge right here. Let me know if it does run, if this uh, oil pressure is, is uh, good or not. Should be able to see that needle move. Uh, if you don't see that needle move, we'll probably have a problem. See if this works. Going hot. Well, it works. That's a good sign. Oh, yeah, it's pumping disgusting stuff up here. How's it doing on the fuel pump down there? Okay, so we got like uh, six volts. Yeah, we got 12 volts there. All right, so ignition is getting power to it. Doesn't look like it's done very good with sucking fuel up yet. Probably because of all this line it's got to suck through. Let's see if I can pressurize that. Maybe I want to try and prime it this way. Okay. Fuel system is primed. Going hot. <laughs> Woo! That's a good start. Well, the fuel pump's somewhat clean. It's at least pushing fuel, so we're gonna go ahead and stick it on there. Let's see how bad of an idea that is later. All right, here we go. Alrighty, I've adjusted my uh, 
idle screw down here a little bit to increase idle speed a little. Just see if that uh, see if that changes anything. Give her a couple pumps, see if she'll start up. I've been having pretty good success there with a few pumps and then going, so let's see. What I was doing there, got the uh, magic in a bottle out. Went ahead and uh, idle her up some with the throttle linkage, so that's a good sign. And then started pouring some sea foam down the uh, carburetor, and uh, it really starts to smoke a lot when that happens. The cool thing is, you uh, you pour it down in there, and the smoke is actually, at least supposedly, the carbon buildup, and uh, probably the fact that you're choking the motor out too but uh, it helps to burn the carbon build up and, and hopefully some of that other gunk that's on the sidewalls. And maybe it will do an okay job of cleaning up the cylinder walls and the valves and uh, stuff like that. But uh, you kind of do that for a little while, let it get nice and warm, and then you choke it out with the sea foam and let it sit here for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. I'm gonna change the oil while I do that since it's all warmed up, up now. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll probably do the sea foam trick again. Ooh, bad milk color. Lots of metal too. Ooh, not good. Clumpy too. So if you're wondering why I ran it without changing the oil first, it's because if you don't get the oil hot or at least warm, you're less likely to get those chunks that you see flowing out to come out. So once you get it warmed up, it breaks down those chunks a little bit and they'll actually come out with the uh, with all the other oil. So if you don't do that, you change the oil, you run it a little bit, and then you change the oil again. And that's just a waste of an oil chain. Oh yeah. That's nice. Looks like someone's got a Hershey Squirts. Oh hey, before we change the filter, Check out what Oliver found. Nice uh, muddy hole. So, uh, good job, bud. There, I got my new filter. Got a touch of new oil on my finger. I'm just gonna give that a little bit of lubrication helps it seal up against the uh, surface here also prevents the dry gasket from uh, grabbing and making you think you got it on when you didn't there we go now you gotta get these things like grease monkey tight there's four quarts going hot I wonder if I'm still getting fuel. Oh, my alternator's working. My battery might be dying too. All right, let's see what she does. I bet you the battery's dead. Yep, battery dead. Well, I think that wraps up this video. Go ahead and hit the like button down below, because this was a lot of fun. I'll get a battery, some plug wires, and a fuel filter, and we'll be uh, off to the races next time. I'll also probably work on getting a fuel tank for this thing, and we'll, we'll plumb it in a little bit better. I don't think I want to use that old one, because it's got a lot of rust in the bottom, and I don't want to have to try and clean it. Overall, it's been fun trying to get this thing to run. It may be a piece of junk, but uh, I think it'll still work. Thanks for watching, y'all. Have a good one. Hey, button, button. Can't get the carburetor off. Gonna have to replace the whole engine. That feels nice and sludgy. Boom, capped. Clumpy too. Looks like someone's got a Hershey Squirts. A little bit of lubrication. Grease monkey tight. Good job, bud.